Hey, welcome to my new tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you basic motion tracking in Adobe After Effects. If you don't know what motion tracking is, it pretty much, um, if you have a moving video, uh, you track the motion of it, and then you can place an object in your video, and it will move along with the footage. Like it'll, if your footage is moving sideways, you can make text move with it. Um, that kind of thing. So um, we'll just. With this tutorial, I'm just going to try and speed things up a bit from my other tutorials. A um, bit less random stuff and no sneezing, hopefully. So, open up After Effects and drag your footage in. I'm just going to use this footage of my lounge room that I just filmed before. Um, it's just me panning through. Alright, um, we'll have the like an example, we'll have the text probably on the wall here next to the lamp and the louvers. So what we want to do is go layer, new, null object to start things off. This will guide our text later when we um, put our text in, or our object. Alright, so now what we want to do is uh, go window and make sure tracker is ticked and that'll pop up down here. Now you want to double click on your footage for this and click track motion. Now all these options will come unblanked out or ungrade, whatever you want to call it, and this little track point here will appear, which will be called track point one. Now with motion tracking, you want to find a place that doesn't move to track your motion to. Um, so a good place would be anywhere like the corner of these louvers or this lamp here, because they're not going to move and they're in the footage the whole way through. If it goes off the footage, it won't be able to track that, so it'll stuff up. So you need something that remains in the footage throughout the whole course of the um, movie. So, um, now let's just move this, and let's put it there. That's where I did in the example, and it seems to work out fairly well. So, now that we've got that sorted, make sure you're at the beginning of your footage as well. I keep forgetting to do that. That's very important, because if you start there your track will actually start back there somewhere and it'll all be out of place so make sure you're at the start of your footage when you place your track points alright now that we've got that done um, let's make sure your target is your null object if you have multiple layers already on it might auto select a different one so just make sure it's set to the null object now you want to analyze forward by pressing that button and it will slowly go through your footage and if you look your track point should stay fairly close to, um, it shouldn't really move around much at all. Okay, now that that's done, you can see all these little squares here, and that is your motion track. You can see they're all pretty lined up. They go up a bit because I sink the camera down a bit, so it's all good. Now you want to click apply, and X and Y, and OK. Now it'll go back to your original composition, and all these keyframes will be there. So as you can see, your null object is now where your track point was, and it's stuck there well. So you can just minimize all of that, and um, just import your object or type your text. So I'll just type infused media. Now we'll scale that up a bit and rotate it. Make it a 3D object as well, that's important. So ro we'll rotate it negative 90 degrees, just is pretty good and we want it to make it look like it's actually on the wall the motion tracking will keep it in place but it won't rotate it and make it look like it's stuck to the wall so we'll have to do that ourselves by using these rotations so just play around with a few of these until you're happy with them you want to make it pretty much parallel to the louvers it's a good guide if you have something similar like there we go. And there. So that looks pretty good. Um, maybe tilt it that way just a bit. There we go. Now what we want to do is the text isn't stuck there yet. As you can see the text moves along with the composition and we don't want that. So what we want to do is get your little parent object here which is a squiggly line and drag it to your null object. What that does is it copies all the expressions from the null object into the text. So pretty much what you do to the null object will happen to the text. So since the null object is tracked to there, 
the text will also be tracked like it'll move with with the null object so as you can see the text now stays on the wall which is the effect we're looking for I'll just rotate this a tiny bit more it doesn't look quite right the way it was that looks a bit better and we'll move it there so now you can see it's stuck there from the start to the end and it should be in a similar position um, if you've got a rotating camera like I do, how it kind of pans and rotates slightly, the text should rotate, but um, I really can't be bothered doing that. You can play around with that yourself, just using keyframes. And moving on, we want to make it look a bit better right now. As you can see, there's a light there and everything is casting shadows except our text, so it looks a bit out of place. So what you want to do is go to your effects and presets and type drop shadow, or just drop and drop shadow should be down there somewhere. So drag it onto your text. And now you can see the, the shadows are kind of coming diagonally down. But that's not what we want. If you look at all the other shadows, they're pretty much coming directly sideways. Um, also, the light is right beside it. So we'll just go 90 degrees, and that should work fine. Now, you want to set the distance up a tiny bit, maybe. Just play around these settings until you have a look you like. I don't like solid shadows, so I'll put the softness up to probably 3 or 4, and that's looking good. Maybe 6 for the distance. Alright, now, um, if you want to change your text a bit, you can use things such as ramps to put a gradient in, or you can add a slight glow to it, um, which will help enhance the shadows, and change both of the colors to black, and... A and B colors and put the intensity up a little bit and the radius out or in just leave, just leave the radius as it is similar so that looks pretty good right there um, just fix these shadows up sorry and softness up a bit yeah there we go that looks good so now as you can see it all looks pretty pretty sweet so that's your effect there um, I might be making a Sony Vegas tutorial for this soon this is the first time I've actually tried this in Adobe After Effects excluding the other one which I followed a tutorial for but um, it's the first time I've tried it without watching anything so I hope everything works out fine for you and it appears to worked out good for me um, this will also work with shaky footage um, it won't just it doesn't just work for panning, it'll work for shaking and other things like that. Zooming, um, except with zooming you'll have to play around the scale, I th maybe. I'm not sure, I haven't tried zooming. But anyway, that's pretty much it. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you liked this video and it helped you. And check out my channel for other useful tutorials. So for now, thanks and I'll see you next time.